for our rants and raves of the week. And we start with you, Dan. Well, I've had too many raves, so I have a <laughs> rant this week for Felix Salmon, of, uh, of, who wrote a piece for Fusion. And I, I've got to get the headline right. To all the young journalists looking for advice, now, it sounds awful. And it really isn't quite as bad as the headline. But nevertheless, he proceeds to go on at great length that young people should not go into journalism because uh, the money isn't there anymore and because they're unlikely to have some of the lucky breaks that he had on the way up. And, you know, what I would say is things are changing. Yeah. And uh, there are ways forward. Mm -hmm. You know, I've been teaching for 10 years now. Our graduates have gone on to jobs at major news organizations, community newspapers, BuzzFeed. And there are going to be more jobs opening mm -hmm. up in the future. But the idea that this has ever been a lucrative yeah. field, nobody ever went into this for the money. Right. That hasn't changed. I agree with you. There's mm -hmm. more opportunity than ever. Absolutely. Yeah. All right, Tom. You know, just to pick up quickly on that, David uh, Carr was asked about uh, what advice he would give to young people who w were interested in going to journalism school, and his reply was that they ought to go into some more lucrative field like buggy whip manufacturing. <laughs> But then he, then he quickly oh, turned around and he said he said uh, he did believe that he, that in his view this is the golden era of journalism because this is the time when almost anyone who has something worth saying can get it out there. That's right. Do you have a rant to rave? A, a real quick rave. It's uh, the uh, uh, University of North Carolina's um, Daily Tar Heel newspaper. They covered that uh, terrible massacre, the murder of uh, three Muslims in uh, in Chapel Hill far in a way better than any of the local press did. Really? They stayed with it 24 hours a day. And I only know of it because this uh, newspaper staff, when the Boston Marathon happened, those kids sent our students some uh, pizza. And our students wow. turned around and sent them chocolate chip cookies for the work that they oh, had done. Great. And if you look at it, uh, it well-deserved, yeah. uh, a, a pat on the back to college journalism. Hey, Adam. I have a rave for Adam Vaccaro of Boston.com who wrote this great piece. It was published about a week ago, but I only got to it over the weekend, detailing how the Boston 2024 bid went from being this sort of pie in the uh, sky idea being kicked around by a couple 20-something dudes to something that now has the overwhelming backing of the political and business establishment in Boston and mm -hmm. seems to almost be a fait accompli. There was a ton of great detail there, which was completely news to me. I have been you know, sort of marveling, as I think a lot of people have, at how this, this Olympic idea has just accelerated. It went from zero to 100 in no time flat. This is a great insider account, and it shows what Boston.com is capable of. Send me that. Mm. Really good piece. Mm. <laughs> All right, Josh. Uh, just very briefly, I have a ray for uh, an article that was in Quartz, the online site. They uh, did some interesting <coughs> social research and get some survey data around the world asking people who live in various countries, do you use the internet and do you use Facebook? And they no. found in a number of cases there were people who thought that mm. Facebook was the internet. Um, that, that basically they thought that the fact that they were on Facebook meant that that was, that was where Facebook ended is where the, the internet ended as well. Um, huge implications for, for news organizations who are increasingly reliant on Facebook to reach their, their audience. Facebook wants to take over the entire media universe and it seems like it would, in some people's minds they've already succeeded. The, the, the same survey would probably hold true if you took it right here. Probably so, yeah. yeah. I don't see it would be any different. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right, well I have a rant for uh, WCVB Channel 5, my old uh, alma mater there. I was watching a couple of the newscasts last night, and they used that photograph of Jahar Zarnayev to explain how the, 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 the defense is, is seeking a, a change of venue. I realize that's a real photograph. I know it's a selfie. I know he took it. But that's the one that was on the cover of Rolling, Rolling Stone, Stone that got all that controversy because it made him look like such a handsome young kid. I, they didn't once use the photograph of him being pulled out of the boat, you know, bloodied and bruised and battered. And it, it, was, it was like generic B-roll, I understand. But it's like so sloppy. And all it needed to do was, and, and then it wasn't like they did it once. I actually tweeted something out that nobody responded. They did it again. It was just mm. that they had the same thing. Somebody just cut it and it was like mindless backdrop B-roll mm. instead of thinking twice. And, and what's it got to do with the change of venue? You know, they should have used mm. the, the attorneys, which I know they had pictures of them. You think they'd use that if there were cameras allowed in the courtroom? Of they wouldn't need not. to, right? Yeah. Right. Well, I agree with who you needs, on that. But, but, but just one yeah. eyeball could have cut that thing out and said yeah. that's not the right photograph. All right, that is it for our show. Tell us what you think. How do you remember David Carr and Bob Simon? What's been your reaction to the latest revelations about Brian Williams? Weigh in on our website, 
beatthepress.org. You can also catch up on past episodes or watch any of this show you may have missed.